Welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Another day and another strike. That seems to be the life of the Academic Staff Union of Universities. The union is planning to begin another strike action over unpaid salaries. ASU says more than 1,000 of its members are owed 13-month salaries and check-off dues. We've invited the National Coordinator of Education Rights Campaign, Hassan Soweto, to join us this morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, uh, Hassan. Yeah, good morning. Thanks good morning. for having me. Thanks for joining us. It's a little heartbreaking, I believe, for you know members of the Academic Staff Union of Universities. But you know, what, it, what seems to have gone wrong once again? It's the same old story. Government is sincerity. The government makes uh, agreement with uh, unions, agreement that it knows it is not going to I mean, implement. That is what has um, led to the cycle of industrial actions and strikes in the education sector. The major problem is government insecurity. We did not start with this government, but this government has continued <laughs> that practice. Okay, and we had agreements uh, about uh, payment of salaries, and that was one of the reasons the strike was suspended in the first place. <laughs> So as it stands, is it, does it you know, mean that none of those payments have been made and none of those salaries have been you know, given to, to the lecturers? No, like the, uh, the chairman of uh, ASU Unijos and the president of ASU explained uh, in the papers yesterday, uh, what is clear is that some salaries have been paid, but it's not been a general, generalized payment. So that you still have on many campuses and universities, you know, lecturers who are still being hold some backlog of uh, salaries. And like the president of ASU also alleged, it appears that the federal government is trying to use the payment of the salary as a sort of a, a means or tool to compel the lecturers to join the IPPIS. So, there are, there are vast situations in some universities whereby lecturers who agree to join the IPPIS would have their salary paid almost immediately. Whereas those who do not want to join, the government has been more or less stonewalling the union. They keep asking the union to send the details of those lecturers, like their bank details and all of that. And when these are sent, you know, a few weeks after the same government would again ask that uh, some new document should be sent, apparently just to continue to stonewall the union. So these are the things that have been happening uh, since the strike was uh, suspended. And that is why the union is saying that once again, they might take a part of strike if uh, things do not, um, I mean, are not resolved. All right, um, Hassan. How would you say this particular situation of, you know, the cycle, like you've described it, government insincerity, uh, failure to pay salaries of lecturers, also non-academic staff as well. How would you say this is affecting the image and, in fact, the quality of federal education in Nigeria? And what really is the plight or the rights of students in all of this? You know, it's been very tragic for the education sector. Uh, because if you, the last strike, you know, was even more painful, given the fact that um, uh, you had last year a situation whereby students lost about four months due to the pandemic, and then only for the strike to now prolong the closure of the university even for, for several more months. So, so that uh, you have a situation whereby maybe nearly uh, 10 months out of uh, last year was lost in the university system. And um, when you go way back into the past uh, two decades, for instance, you will realize that, uh, you know, you'll be counting the losses in terms of years, you know, that, you, that the university system has lost. And the impact on students, you know, is unquantifiable. You know, you have students who just waste away in the university spending years. And then by the time they eventually graduate, they have lost the zeal, you know, they have lost the drive. Um, so people just graduate feeling completely despondent and unsure of their future. So it is also adding to the frustration that Nigerian students I mean, face on a, and the youth face on a daily basis. 
And, and for the economic sector itself, uh, it also means that for lecturers who have to go through that process of having to go on strike just for the peanut that is their salary to be paid, it makes them to lose every sense of commitment to the system. So we have also had uh, an increase in, in, in brain drain, for instance, yeah. with uh, lecturers who ordinarily who want to stick with the country, now having to take every, any opportunity that they get to, to run out of the country. And so the, the, the consequence, the price is, is so steep. And that is why it is important that um, the working people, the, the trade labor movement as a whole, parents and students, have to see how they can join hands with us to be able to make the government to do what is right. Because like we always say, the challenge actually is not that there's not enough resources to fund education or to meet the demands of ASU and other unions. But what has been the bane, what has been the crisis is the fact of the capitalist arrangement in Nigeria, whereby those in power do not have any belief that government ought to be utilized as a means to satisfy the needs of people. That is the major reason why this crisis is happening. And that is why we need to solidarize with the struggles of ASU in order to ensure that the government is compelled to do what is right. And at the same time, there's also the need you know, to fight for a socialist transformation of the country because Nigeria has enough resources to fund education to ensure that this cycle of industrial action strike is broken. But without a working people's government that really believes in public education, this crisis will continue and not definitely. All right. Um, I want us to also address uh, those who say that ASU might, you know, be a little inconsiderate. Um, and, you know, they, they maybe should consider the plight of students here and, um, you know, sign off with the IPPIS, let education go on, you know, instead of, you know, mostly just taking a, uh, thinking of themselves only. So how would you address those, uh, those views? Actually, I think those views are a little bit unfair and also uh, maybe uh, not, uh, those, those issues also do not show a, a clear understanding of the crisis in the education sector. ASU is also guided by its own experiences and also the experiences of others. ASU has watched, you know, the others, other sort of sector, the other sector, get completely destroyed. As we have seen the primary sector, the secondary sector completely destroyed. And he realizes that if as a union, it also applies the same compromising stance that unions in these other subsectors utilize, which have enabled the government over the decades to be able to chip in, to be able to chip away rather, that the same tragedy could also happen to the tertiary education subsector. Because uh, what it will mean really is that ASU will just focus on the welfare of its own members. And once they get some, I mean, uh, improvement in the salaries of their members, then they will not say anything again. That will mean that there will be very few strikes. But the uh, consequence will be that the funding of education will even go down much more than we, have, we, we, know, we know of it now. The cost of education will go up atrociously. And it will mean that what we know of public education today will not be there at all. The public, the private universities and co will be the ones that will take over. One of the benefits of ASU's struggle over the years is that despite everything, it has actually compelled the government to even pay lip service to its responsibilities. But if there was no such you know, stout resistance over the decades, you know, we will not have anything to talk about when it talk, comes to public university system. So, I, I understand the pain of people when they talk like this also. It's also because of how this affects all of us. Yeah. But we, we have to also place the blame where it actually lies. And that is why I would keep on saying that the government has to be taken up because the same thing that they are doing to us, they are doing it to other categories of workers. Okay. If you look at other sectors of the Nigerian economy today, it's the same thing, same sincerity, same refusal to do what is right to use the type of resources to provide for the needs of uh, those who actually matter. And this has to stop. All right. Um, Ms. Hassan, last question from me. Um, what would you say is the best model for university education in Nigeria that will put an end to you know, strikes once and for all? The only model is, that I see is uh, 
a public Hassan, we lost you there for a moment. Could you please come again? I said the only model that I know of is a public education system that is well-funded with provision of adequate facilities and infrastructures for students and staff to flourish funded, with the recognition of the democratic rights of students and staff and also with the awareness that education ought to be linked to driving economic growth and welfare of the people. Yes, yeah, so, so that kind Hassan, of Hassan, are you saying, hold on, please, uh, the current can you hold on? Are you saying funded by the government still? Oh, yes. <coughs> Go ahead, please. Go ahead. Oh, yes, funded by the government. The whole idea of a private funding of education is an illusion. The, what it will lead to is inequal access to education. We have seen it in other sectors, in the healthcare sector. It has meant that the people's life and health is now bargained on the basis of the ability to pay. That can be the way forward for a society that is flowing in natural resources and all and, and, and in human capacity. We need to restore the idea of public funding of education. If the facilities for students and, and staff to work with are provided, there will be less of industrial action or of protest. Because lecturers and students do not necessarily want disturbance, as we have identified during the course of this interview. The students are even the worst victim of some of these things. So nobody wants trouble. But when it gets to a point whereby students are not able to have quality education, or the cost of it is beyond what they can afford, or lecturers, you know, have to, you know, confront hunger, even though they are working, there's no way they are not going to resort to some form of protest or the other. So the only way to restore peace and harmony is to ensure that the uh, funding of education is appropriately done and the facilities are provided. Okay. Um, qu quickly, before we go, is there any information on um, the release of funds for revitalization? I remember that was one of the things that was uh, uh, the, uh, part of the bone of, con of contention you know, with the last uh, strike. <laughs> yes. Uh, was... Yes. Was there any release of that the... That has not been... <laughs> nothing has been done, nothing. They are still, the government, federal government is still holding the university system about 1.1 trillion naira since about 2012. You know, the, the administration of, of, of President Buhari hasn't even paid it. A tranche. That's to show you how anti-poor and anti-education this administration really is. Would you, would you want um, other labor unions to join ASU um, in this uh, <laughs> agitation? Definitely. The, the, the ASU has uh, been, been trying, but obviously, you know, the, the, the struggle to reposition education is the struggle of all. So uh, our call also has to go to the NLC, to the TUC, you know, to back up ASU. And one of the things that uh, I think the labor movement can do it's even to call a summit, you know, or a, or a conference, bringing together unions in the education sector as well as the student movement to so discuss ways of, uh, you know, organizing in order to ensure that all of the pending issues and demands in the sector, that there's a collective effort to fight to ensure that government, you know, meets all of these demands. Because uh, we are talking about the federal government now, but by the time you go into the uh, state levels where you have state universities and co. It's it, you even have more crisis. You know you have in Lagos State, for instance. You know at Lagos State University, about five member, I mean staff who are leaders of uh, of uh, ASU have been sacked for the past uh, four years or thereabout. And when you go to other states like that, it's the same situation of attacks on uh, workers or even increment of fees. You have the example of the Kaduna State University where fees were increased by governor. So all of this needs to be brought together, and that's what a summit can do. So I think that labor movement can naturally help us in doing that if they can uh, provide leadership, you know, for this struggle. That will really be a, a, a good way 
to ensure that uh, the unions that have been fighting that they are assisted. Okay. Well, hopefully um, the federal government does act uh, before there's another strike because I don't think Nigerian students want to be stuck at home for another couple of months again. It's been too long and too painful. Thank you very much, Thank Hassan you. Soweto, for speaking with us this morning. Thanks for, thanks for having me. All Thank right. You. We'll go on a short break. When we come back, what is the understanding of restructuring and the agitation for restructuring? It's still part of conversations across Nigeria today. And we're going to be speaking this morning with Victor Okai to have a clearer picture of where we are and what exactly is the restructuring that Nigerians are clamoring for. We'll be right back.